Hi, everybody. It's Michael Angelo Caruso. Welcome to another episode of the Talk to Me podcast. A uh, friendly reminder that if you're watching the video version of this on YouTube, you can also listen to the audio version on the Talk to Me platform, iTunes, Podbean, etc. And if you're listening to the audio version, you can watch the video version on YouTube. My guest today is Herb Klotz. I, I've known Herb uh, just for a short time, but I, I've really come to respect him as, a, as somebody who's a man of the world. And I didn't know why exactly. I know him from Rotary and we're, we're serving on a committee together. And I just like how his style and how he rolls. How are you? Hi, I'm, I'm doing good today. How are you? Doing good. And then I found out your, your big claim to fame, at least the one I'm, I know you for, is that you've hiked 95% of the Appalachian Trail, correct? Yeah, that's correct. It's Go been ahead. a long time, but, uh, but yes, I, um, I, I have hiked uh, from Maine and I have a 110 mile section left in, in Georgia. Yeah, it's uh, 2,200 miles total. Uh, I just guessed at the, 20, at the 95%, but it turns out it is just about 5% to go. We're gonna talk to Herb uh, today, everybody, about uh, his adventures on the trail over 14 years of hiking. Um, and ask questions, maybe questions that you would like to know if you're thinking about hiking what's known as the AP. Um, and I think hiking turns us on to other types of life lessons. And I think, uh, I, I think Herb's gonna share a few of those with us too, if I'm not mistaken. So let's, let's find out what's going on. Um, is hiking, did that come to you late in life, Herb, or have you always been interested in it? No, actually, um, I was a Boy Scout. Uh, and uh, I really enjoyed the outdoors when, when I was growing up as, uh, as a scout. And um, we, we went on overnights every weekend. And I went to Philmont in New Mexico and did, did lots of hiking as, as a teenager and then as a, a young adult. And then got married and we had three girls. So that was the end of my Boy Scout career, at least at that time. Now girls are members of the Boy Scouts, but at that time that wasn't the case. I was thinking so, getting married and having three girls was the end of your testosterone. <laughs> so so um, I'm no comment. Um, <laughs> so so the you know so uh, I took a hiatus for about 15 years. And it turned out when my girls were teenagers, they, they loved to go hiking with me. So I restarted it again uh, in my 40s. And we, uh, we, did a lot of, we did a lot of hiking and uh, I kind of got the bug to hike the Appalachian Trail uh, early 2000s because, uh, well, it's about 40, well, it's not even that, it's about 20 miles from my house. And so I started hiking uh, day hikes on the AT. Didn't really think about trying to hike the whole thing when we started, but, but uh, here I am and I've got uh, 110 miles to go, so. Good for you, man, that's great. So did you, I, I guess I lost track there in the narrative, did you start hiking with your daughters? Yeah, I started hiking with my daughters different, different places and we like to travel. So we'd, we'd hike in different parts of the, the the world or or in Pennsylvania, but um, the AT wasn't really part of my hiking with my daughters until later. Uh, right. But 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 they're the ones that got me started on it, and then it just sort of grew from there. So was I right that hiking turns your brain on and your consciousness on to other things? I'm guessing that by hiking with your daughters and family members, maybe various friends through the year. It, it somehow enriches the relationship and, and and gets you to appreciate each other in different ways. I mentioned this because there was a guy by the name of Joseph Campbell, who famously wrote about something he called the hero's journey, which is this idea that if, if you take a trip, that you come back a changed person, often improved. And then if you take that trip with another person, you get this kind of a, a combo platter where a, a bunch of people are improving at the same time. Is that your experience? Uh, I would say so. I mean, we certainly have gotten to know each other. I have a, I have a friend, uh, his name is Fritz. Uh, he's, 
he's hiked about half of the trail with me together. Oh, and that's a that's a big so he's, partnership. So he's the one who started hiking with me in Pennsylvania, because you know when you when you do a day hike, you have to do a shuttle, right? And so you put one car at one end and one car at the other, and then you hike the ten or fifteen miles or whatever it is, and then you go back and you get the other car. And so he was my shuttle mate, and we would we would hike together, uh, and, and that's how we started. And then we started doing overnights because it got too far. You know, I mean, when it's 100 miles, you're not going to do a day hike. So, so then we started doing uh, overnights and then we started doing three days and then we started doing four days. And then, you know, before we knew it, we had hiked the middle 1100 miles, if you will, from, from Northern Virginia up to Vermont uh, of the Appalachian Trail. Why did you start with the middle? Well, because that's where I live. Okay. And, you know, people, people have asked me, well, did you start north to south or south to north? The answer is it, it was all different directions. It was whatever, wherever I could, um, wherever I could get somebody to hike with me for a couple of days and, and then I would do it. But like I said, my friend Fritz, he hiked about 1100 miles with me. Well, so, I've always thought that I, I hear people about hike, people hiking the uh, PCT, Pacific crest trail is that what it's called That's correct yeah all these trails i never think about them doing it in sections let alone starting in a middle section and then tagging the other sections on i always think in my linear brain i guess start at the top go to the bottom uh start at the top go as far as you can then continue on that next you know your next journey you pick up where you left off but who's to say you can't do it in all kinds of different sections and the shuttle thing is interesting to me i was wondering how people did that so are you saying that after you hike the, the distance near your home, you both have to get in a car, you and Fritz, you drive a hundred miles. Well, it wouldn't be, we, we, this was when it was close. Yeah, it was, you know, 50, 60 miles tops, we would, we would go. Well, how do you do it? How do you do the shuttle thing later on? When maybe oh, later know? on, there's, there's, there's shuttle drivers all along the Appalachian Trail. Oh. So basically what you'll do is you'll, uh, you'll, you'll park your car where you're gonna end and then a shuttle driver will pick you up and you'll pay them a fee and they'll drive you to where you wanna start and then you hike back to your car. Okay, very good. So that's, that's how that works. So, so a comment about the, the section hiking. Well, you know, most, most people who hike the Appalachian Trail are not section hikers. Most people are through hikers. That's they right. do it in one shot, right? Yeah. They'll start in Georgia and they'll hike to Maine. Well, there's all different kinds of variations, okay? And um, so they, they think that a section hiker, are, they're, they're absolutely amazed that somebody keeps coming back to the Appalachian Trail and hikes some more, you know, just 50 miles or 100 miles or whatever. And, um, and then I'm, I'm the same way. I admire them because I could not spend five months on the trail by myself, I just couldn't do it. Uh, my longest hike that I've done uh, was was the state of Maine. Uh, I did uh, 200, I think it's 265 miles in Maine. Uh, that took me three weeks. And I'll be honest with you, uh, Michael, after two weeks, uh, that was enough for me. And the only reason I got through the last week was because I met a hiking friend on the trail. His, his, his name was Snake. And we hiked together for the last week. And that got me through the last week to get home. If, if I hadn't met him, I probably would have done my two weeks and come home and then gone back again and did, did the week that I needed to. So, so through, hiker, through hiking is a different challenge than section hiking. Section hiking, you have to do it you know, for years. I'm and, thinking of the, the through hikers as the professionals and because they take it very seriously. Very seriously. Uh, very serious time commitment. You'd have to get uh, time off work if you were still working and that kind of thing. You'd have to be in really good shape. You'd have to have stamina, patience, willing not to take a shower for longer periods of time, I assume. And well, that's, that's, that, that goes, that's for section hikers too. You, you, don't, you, don't get, you don't get, you don't get uh, showers for several days. And, and, the, and the section hikers are uh, maybe the amateur version no less important as people, 
But you're saying that there, there are more people that do the through hike than the section. Oh, yeah. It's much easier because you do it in one shot. And when you say people are in shape, some of them are in shape, but many of them get in shape as they're hiking. Okay. And um, so, you know, there's many stories of that. And, and really, you know, the physical part of the hike is, is something that I could easily do that, you know, the through hike it's, it's the, the, it's the month that, you know, it's staying on the trail for months, which is the mental part of the hike that that's, that, that really doesn't interest me. Yeah. I learned another term as I was getting ready for this interview. So we have the through hikers, which go from top to bottom or bottom to top one, one long fell swoop. We have the section hikers and we have a, somebody called yo-yos, you know, that term. The yo-yo does the through hike, say from Maine to Georgia, and then turns around and goes back the other way. I imagine that's the smallest of the three groups. Uh, you bet. There aren't many people that do yo-yos. But um, you bet. you'd have to stretch out into the extremities of the weather as well, the winters. Right. I imagine you do your turnaround. You'd start in Georgia, go up to Maine, do your turnaround there rather than the opposite. Right. You'd start in Georgia in probably February, March. You'll, you'll get to Maine by... July, August, and then hike back and it'll probably be November, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So I met uh, one, of the, one of the times when I was hiking was down in Tennessee. Uh, I met one of the legendary through hikers. Okay. By chance. His name, his name was Seiko. And um, he lived, Seiko like the watch. Seiko. It's still an unusual name. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. We all have trail names. We don't oh, use no. our real names. Okay? What, so, Herb, what is your trail name? So, basically, the way this works is somebody else names you. Okay. Now, my name is funny because it doesn't, because it took me 14 years. But my name is Jack Rabbit. Jack Rabbit? Jack Rabbit. Yeah. So I my, assume you walk fast. So my trail name is Jack. Well, I mean, I guess for a 60 year old man, I hike pretty fast, but, um, but, uh, but not, not for, not compared to a 25 or 30 year old. I, I think it's kind of funny. They just blow right by me. Um, but, um, but what I, was, what I was saying was I met Seiko and Seiko had uh, through hike the Appalachian trail 14 times. And he had done three yo-yos. Wow. Okay. So he was he was in his 70s and he had done the triple crown three times. So, so the, the triple, triple crown, crown is, is the Appalachian Trail, the Continental Divide, and the Pacific Crest Trail. Right. Like the so Holy done, Trinity or something. Yeah, they, they call it the Triple Crown. Okay. And 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 he was in his 70s. So basically he started this in his 20s and he's been hiking his whole entire life. So I, I had never met a person, you know, like that. There, there are a few of these legendary uh, through hikers that basically do this their whole life. And that was, that was kind of exciting. That one. Why, one why do they call this guy Seiko, you know? What's that? Why do they call him Seiko? Um, evidently he, I, I'm not sure, but it, it had to do with the fact that he kept things on time. Okay. okay? All right. He was, he was, he was always on time. So I, 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 at least that's, that's what I recall. Why did they call Snake Snake? Oh, Snake told me his, his nickname was because uh, he was, uh, it was in the army and he basically a snake is somebody who took somebody else's girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, so his, his nickname was Snake. But we got to know each other a lot. You were talking about, you know, uh, how, how it enriches you. Well, when, when you're walking along on, 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 a, on a hike, you, you talk, you can talk for hours, right? And, and you learn a lot about each other that yeah. way. You, you don't talk the whole time because it, it gets tiring, but, but you'll, you'll, you'll talk for a half hour, 45 minutes, and then you'll, we'll walk and we'll be, be quiet. Um, There's also um, stops and breaks where you would commiserate a bit, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or but, breaks work. Uh, you can, of course, pull over at any time and, and sit on a log. There may be even some other rest stops on the trail. Well, yeah, there's the, the one thing that's 
interesting about the Appalachian Trail is there, there are, you know, there are lean-tos about every 10 or 15 miles along the trail. And you can, you know, you can, if you want, stay overnight in those lean-tos. Now with COVID, they're all closed. But, um, but you know, basically they're first come, first serve. And uh, uh, there, are, there was many a rainy night when I was happy to be in a lean-to, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you could stay in hotels, right? You can, you I, don't have to camp. You could, most of the time though, you're camping. Um, so people are uh, carrying a pack and mm -hmm. a tent. Yep. And how much is that way? Uh, I realize there's different. Well, my, my pack typically without food and water is around 20 pounds, okay? So basically it has what I need to sleep, um, my emergency gear, and... and um, so break this down for us. What is, what is it that you need to sleep? And my clothes, right? You need a sleeping bag, maybe a pillow of some sort? Yeah, a, sleep, a, a light sleeping bag, a, a, sm a small one person tent, Although there have been times when I just carried a tarp, um, an air mattress. I, don't, I like to be comfortable when I sleep, but you can, you know, in this day and age, you can buy uh, an air mattress that weighs one pound and every ounce matters. So, so it's 20 pounds for the pack, but then you have food and water. And, you know, if you've got five days of food on your back plus water, you know, it can easily be 35 to 40 pounds. Yeah, Let, let's not move too fast through the pack because I know this is uh, critical and I find it fascinating what people choose to take with them. Is there anything else that you quote need to sleep? Something that we haven't mentioned yet that might be interesting? Well, I, 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 have, a, I have a very comfortable sleeping bag. I have a, a, you can either bring a sleeping pad or you can bring an air mattress. Um, I don't bring a pillow, but what I do is I bring like a pillow case and then I'll take one of my pieces of clothing and I'll squish it up and that's my pillow. Makes sense, yeah. Okay. And, um, and so that's pretty much all I need there. And then uh, I need a change of clothes, um, okay. one change of clothes. You can't carry more than that uh, because if your clothes get wet, you, you got to have some way to, to so keep So the it. reason you carry the change of clothes is not to have something clean to wear, but to have something dry. Something dry, and and typically what I'll do is I'll put on my hiking clothes during the day because they get all sweaty, and then at the end of the day I'll take them off and put on, put on the uh, clean clothes so I don't smell so bad. And yeah, yeah, you know. okay. But but there's certain kinds of fabrics where you can wear them and they don't smell. That's kind of neat. Right, and there's this there's uh, these technology clothes now they they're self-wicking they have vents yeah. they have all kinds of yeah yeah and and you learn you learn yeah. very quickly which ones really work and which ones don't so yeah that, no the technology today uh has lightened the load tremendously yeah compared to 30 20 30 years ago in terms of what you what you have to carry take us through the food in the water details so food is always Dehydrated food. I mean, you you don't carry you don't carry. Uh, 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 you, you, there you might there might be a little a few things you'll carry like maybe a slab of cheese or a salami or something like that that's not dehydrated. But for the most part, you're carrying dehydrated food. You're carrying uh, a trail mix. You're because uh, you know high calorie high calorie density food is what you need because you can't eat enough. I'm sorry, you can't put enough calories in your body. You're burning so many calories, especially a man. Men lose incredible amounts of weight, uh, especially through hikers. Uh, so on the Appalachian so for the uninitiated, when you're hiking or doing anything physical or strenuous and you don't have enough calories, you get tired very quickly. You lose the ambition to finish the day's hike. I, I don't know. I've, I've never had that experience. Uh, I just know that I lose a lot of weight. Oh, you lose a lot of weight. Yeah. Okay. So do you eat the calories to protect not your energy level, but your, your weight? Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I usually lose weight uh, when I go, you know, if, I, if I'm out for two weeks, uh, then, then I'll, I'll typically lose five or six pounds. 
I would think that's fairly predictable. If you're in the heat, you're certainly expending a lot of energy. You're not eating mm -hmm. really very well. You, you, you're, you're subsisting, I think. Right. That, okay. And when, and when, and when, when they talk about like through hikers, what, what, the, you know, the, they're on the trail for much longer. And so when they get into a town, I mean, they can eat anything they want. Okay. And they do because your, 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 your body is craving so much, you know, calories and, and you, 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 you eat incredible volumes of food. And if it's just to sort of re re nourish your, your body. I would think it's the same thing with sleep. You, you can, you can dodge sleep for a week, but you can't dodge it for five months. No, you, you, you but, but sleep on the trail, you, when, when it gets dark, you go to bed and then, and then you wake up in the morning. There's there, you know, if you're, a, if you're a hiker and you're out for any, any length of time, it's, there, there aren't parties when you're, when you're backpacking that, there are there are people that go out just for the weekend and party that that's that's different but when 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 you're with when when you, when you're with true hikers that that's not something that, that you typically see no you would not see parties no no yeah. you, you when you're on the trail you're on a mission yeah. um is there now, now yeah. having said that there are some there are some hikers that you know view it as a, a many month party well, you're, you're hiking with a guy named Snake. I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got, I got off the trail. You, wait, you got off the trail. Yeah. What do they say in England? And you've you've lost the trail. <laughs> you've lost the thread. Uh, so um, uh, when you finish the uh, hiking, all twenty two hundred miles, do you get something, or are you on the honor I system? Think so. Are you I, your ticket punched? Yeah, I think so. Well, you 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 register your name. Uh, I, I don't know because I'm not finished. Um, but but uh, I, I think I think you get a patch or something and a certificate saying that you you're a, you've got a two thousand mile you you know Just you're like two thousand mile. Just like the Boy Scouts. Yeah. Yeah. Good that was that wasn't my goal. I mean, it was just something that I wanted to do, but. But uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, unfortunately, this year I was planning to finish, and COVID has changed my plans. Yeah, so. I want to talk about uh, sleep, where you sleep. I want to talk about safety in just a minute. Sure. Uh, on the trail, uh, just a, a couple of quick factoids. I want to get this into uh, into play here so that people appreciate this great achievement of yours because I, I do think that this is. Uh, I was telling somebody the other day. Somebody had asked me what. Um, somebody had asked me what unusual thing I've done, uh, and I, I started to think really hard about this because it's a small world now. You know, people. If you've got the money and the means, you can do almost anything. You can climb Mount Everest. But I was trying to think of something that money couldn't buy, something that everybody wants to do but nobody's done. And it turns out I've attended the Academy Awards. Oh. Very few people, and very few people even know anybody who knows anybody that's gone to the Academy Awards. So that's my little thing. Wow. But, but I consider the Appalachian Trail this because you're the first guy and I, I meet a lot of people, man, through speaking and stuff. And you're the first guy I've ever met that's done even 95%, forget about all of the a AT. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about safety, where you sleep and that sort of thing. Before we do that, let's frame this up because uh, I think it's important when you talk about things like how many people get hurt on the trail and there've been some murders you have to put it in context of the numbers. So about 2 million, I was really surprised at this, 2 million people walk at least part of the trail every year. That's a lot of folk. You would expect some accidents. I don't know about murders, but you'd expect some people to get hurt. Um, uh, the, the whole thing has been going since apparently 1921 in an official capacity when a forester by the name of Benton McKay conceived the AT. I found out Herb, that there, there are people and committees that are actually maintaining the trail and looking after it. It even has representation on a, on a governmental level because it's a national treasure. You know about this, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I suppose there's markers and stuff that explain that as you go along. Also, two other facts before we talk about safety. Both of these come from 2017, the speed record 
as I understand it, for through hike yeah. all the way, top to bottom, Maine to Georgia, 14 states, everybody, uh, was a record of um, 45 days in 2017. Yeah. I don't know if this guy sprinted the trail or what. Do you know about this? Yeah, interesting story about that. For, for a number of years until that gentleman broke the record, the record was held by a woman. And it was held. It was held for maybe I, I don't know how long, uh, and she and he only broke her record by a couple of hours. It wasn't by much. Yeah. And um, and uh, she she did it. She didn't hike as fast as this guy, but what she was able to do was she was able to hike such long periods of time during the day that she was able to, you know. And obviously, these are ultra marathoners that are setting these records and they're they don't have a backpack on their back right you said obviously they're ultra marathoners but i didn't think about that until you said it these yeah. are people that are interested in going fast and winning. going fast and they have a team that are working with them so that oh, they can, so they have support they have support because they they have to hike 50 miles a day the word asterisk comes to mind yeah you know it's it, cheater it, but i mean we typically there are well these days there are two to well maybe three thousand maybe four thousand you know that 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 book uh, Walk in the Woods made the AT really popular and um, that movie when that movie came out yeah and, and, Nick Nolte and um, yeah. I forget who the other guy was and so and Brian Burroughs I think wrote the book yeah yeah so so two or three thousand people start every year on the AT through hiking and, and I think about 15% finished. Now don't quote, I, I, there, there's, there's data on this. I, I don't, I'm not gonna guarantee I got that right. But, um, you know, so there, there are hundreds of people that finish it every year. And speaking of data, the, the last factoid I wanna share before we talk about safety, the oldest person to ever hike the trail, you know the answer to this? Oh, uh, somebody in their 80s. Yeah, 82 year old gentleman in 2017. But these people come from extraordinary situations. It's probably not this guy's first rodeo. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not at all surprised to hear that a woman uh, has had set the record for a, a while. You yeah, know, she, uh, she she's was, yeah. she's not afraid to stop and ask for directions. Right. And there were, there were, there were many men who tried to break her record and, yeah. and failed. Yeah. And, I and, bet she and, took longer to get ready. <laughs> I don't know. No, no comment. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so you uh, want to ask okay. me about safety, okay? Yeah. So so you know, the the main thing we we need to worry about, you know, the the Appalachian Trail is a social experience. It's not. I mean, I hike. I've hiked. You know, out of the twenty one hundred miles, uh, half of it I've hiked alone. You know, I I I was alone when I was hiking. But I'm never alone. There are always people on the trail. Right. You always meet people. You always you always see people, especially in the shelters at night. And um, and so so you know you've always got people there if something happens to you. The the murders obviously they make the headlines, but those are such rare events. Those are not things that that people need to be concerned about. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, think the so. other thing that people often are concerned about are animals uh, like bears and and you know but 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 th those sort of encounters yes I've met bears and I've met moose and I've met lots of snakes uh, on the trail um, but uh, my but but you know th that's really not a that's not a danger the, the well, a lot of danger, what a lot of animals want to avoid the hikers. They're not yeah. like looking for attention. Yeah, absolutely. They're they're not. So yeah. so the biggest danger in my mind is falling. 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 Yeah. You fall. You hurt. You you hurt yourself. You can't get up, and you're alone. You know what? An interesting analogy for what I do for a living. I teach presentation skills, and uh, almost everybody I teach is is afraid of the audience on some level. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about this? You do some speaking. Yes. Afraid of being judged, afraid that you'll be embarrassed in front of those other people, mm -hmm. um, 
afraid that somebody will catch you uh, misstating a fact. When in fact, you know, if you just got your, if you've just, as the saying goes, if you have your shit together, nothing, the audience isn't looking to lay you out, you know, it's most of the time it's the presenter himself who falls. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting way that you put it, that your greatest danger on the trail is yourself. In, in my, in my opinion. And, and so you, you need to be aware, you know, you need to be focused on every step. You need to understand where, you know, uh, I always, I always use hiking poles as a, I mean, when I was younger, I didn't always use hiking poles, but now that I'm older, uh, absolutely. That's something that, that, that I, I would never, I would never go hiking with a pack on my back without hiking poles. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and so you, you need to be careful uh, and you need to be aware. And so, and, and in this day and age, it's, it's better because, you know, you carry a cell phone and you don't always have reception with the cell phone, but at least you've got, you know, and, and there are other safety devices that you can buy, which are satellite based where you, you don't need the cell reception. Right. Uh, and in fact, I did take one of those when I was in Maine because literally there's no cell reception in the North Maine woods. I can tell you that. So you, you do need, you do need uh, something else just from a safety point of view. And, and the main first aid thing that happens is blisters. So you, you need to learn, you need to know your feet. And, what do you mean by that? How do you, how do you learn about that? Well, your... you kind of learn. And, and you, you, need to, you need to learn what, what, what boots work or what sneakers work for you and, and, and those kinds of things. Because I went on one, I went on one 100 mile section in Virginia. It rained every day. Uh, I was supposed to do 200 miles, but after 100 miles, I called my wife and I said, please come pick me up uh, because I couldn't walk anymore because I had such bad blisters on the bottom of my foot. Oh, wow. So, um, so you, 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 you kind of learn, it's trial and error on these things and everybody's feet are different. This day and age, I only hike in sneakers. I don't hike in boots anymore because uh, that I can hike hundred, I can hike hundreds of miles in sneakers and not not get blisters. So, but what are the advantages to boots, really? I mean, if you're well, in, uh, I mean, they, they 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 people would think it, they they would support your ankles and things like that, but in reality, I don't really have problem with that. Some people might. Um, I, my ankles are pretty strong, <clears throat> so I, I haven't had that issue. And boots are heavier too. You mentioned keeping weight down. Yeah, well, you got to keep your weight down. Yeah, if you if you if you've got seventy pounds on your back, chances yeah. are. And my point, ten on your feet. Yeah, I don't know how much boots weigh, but almost every boot that I have weighs more than a tennis shoe. Yeah, they weigh a lot more. So, so yeah. Well, this has uh, been so enlightening, and I hope inspiring for people who are either already in hiking mode and looking for other adventures or maybe you know looking to get into something that might be healthy uh, good for their mind help them develop new relationships appreciate our beautiful country um, i don't know about you but these days I, i'm i'm constantly uh, looking for ways i can become more patriotic because i'm not being served by other aspects of americana for various reasons so I'm like, well, geez, if I go on a trip, can I immerse myself into the geography or the scenery or can I enjoy the people there that much more? And the Appalachian Trail sounds just like that, just like a recipe for success for that kind of thing. It, 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 it's been extremely enriching to me, you know, getting, getting to the top of a mountain and seeing a beautiful view or a beautiful waterfall. Um, yeah. The, these these things we didn't talk about that but i've actually every single day i've hiked on the trail i've taken photos and i have a documentation of every single day i've been on the trail wow so well, i can see in your face that it's just been a, a joy of your life and um, it may be an early congratulations but congratulations nonetheless for hiking all 2200 miles of the appalachian trail maine to georgia in sections in nonetheless, in its entirety. Yeah. Well, thank you. Herb, um, I just want to give a plug too for Rotary because you and I met through uh, 
what I think is the best service organization in the history of the world. And I just want you to know, I appreciate all that you do for, for the Rotary organization. And, uh, and I don't know about you, but I, I have a little Venn diagram that I think, uh, you know, if I become a better uh, American or a better North American, and I can, I can appreciate the country more that, that somehow I can represent America better in an international organization. For me, it's like a strand of DNA. All that stuff winds around itself. Do you, do you ever get a sense of that as we close out? Do you ever get a sense that hiking the trail, this is a stretch maybe, make you a better Rotarian and being a good a Rotarian makes you a better hiker? Well, um, I hadn't thought about it that way, uh, honestly, but uh, the, you know, the, what I what I was really excited about doing with with Rotary this year was I, last year I was the district governor for you know for whatever the pe people may not know what that means but basically it's it's it, it, you're involved with more than one Rotary club you're involved with probably about fifty Rotary clubs and um, I I was hoping to use this uh, this hiking experience and finishing the trail as a as a way to raise uh, raise more money uh, for our foundation. Sure. Um, uh, which is, you know, and I totally agree with you, Michael. Rotary is the best serv service organization that, in the world. I, my only wish is I had learned about it at a younger age. Yeah. Um, but uh, but uh, that unfortunately that didn't happen. So, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to see more of the world in, in, a, in a different perspective. And I have, I have seen many parts of the world uh, through through my through my uh, uh, work where where you know I'm, as an engineer, but uh, but the natural part of the world is is something that's always been very special to me. So I mentioned so. polio because I see the end polio. I mentioned rotary because I see the end polio hat behind you. Yeah. But when are you going to finish up this last leg, man? Uh, well, right. Well, I this, I've I've planned it four times, and COVID has stopped me each time. Uh, so now my next Did plan is late trail March. without without using the lean-tos or no? Yeah, but it's Georgia. And my well, the thing is, is my my children want to do it with me. And so I've got to kind of fit it in where they can come with me. Yeah, and so I think my next attempt is going to be in probably late, mid to late March. OK, well, good luck, Herb. I'm sure we'll, you and I will be in touch before then. Yes, I'm sure we will. Thank you very much for uh, enlightening us about the Appalachian Trail and expanding our worldview just a little bit today. Okay, thank you. Just thank want to you remind everybody me. that's uh, watching the video today to click that uh, silver bell on the YouTube interface so that you're notified of all new videos. And uh, we'll see everybody soon. Thanks again, Herb. Okay, thank you.